try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. Here we are. We are at Strolling Sound <laughs> in Nashville. What's up? Hey there. Look, records on the wall again. It's so good to see. Corner. Oh. And there's the man. <laughs> How's it going, man? Good. You're on camera. Is that okay? Yeah. I yeah, check I your think, hand, but my hands I, are. I, my I hands. think you're. Uh, I think you're a little outdone with the camera game here. Oh man. <laughs> it's okay. I can. I can deal with it. You know. Yes. You, you have a poly star here from. Uh, Mr. Mr. Merrill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a nice table. I reviewed that table. Yeah, it's really good. It's very. This is a very nice facility you have here. All right, forget you have so this been being, here. This is being recorded for the Olympics. So what? what, what? <laughs> <laughs> An IMAX movie? They're close enough. Yeah, pretty pretty close. Oh, you don't always have this kind of coverage here, right? No. I, I understand. I understand what's going on here. Of course. Yeah. So. This is the dream the team, man. Yeah. Hey, Ben. How's it going? Good to see you, so man. Good to see you, Don, man. Dorian. Hello, How are you, man? Hi. Good to see you. Good? I'm good. Yeah, Everything's good. Yeah. Good town, Kathy. Right, Michael. Michael. Right. Hey there. How are you? All right. I brought some stray dogs. Yeah. 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 I saw him. Like, like, he's <laughs> like, like, oh, oh, there he is, a chatster, man. How are you? I haven't How's seen you in a long time. All right. How are you doing? I'm good. All good. All right, so the word's out with the new site and everything, huh? Yeah, oh yeah, we're going. It's like I almost forgot <laughs> everything. Yeah, you know, it was yeah. like... Chad, how often does that happen to you a day? Is that like four or five <laughs> times a day? Just <laughs> 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 once a day. Yeah. Once a day. All day. Yeah. All day. Yeah. All day. Yeah. 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 For Chad, it's like it's an hour goes by for us. It's like tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Is that Barry's Merrill or y'all? Uh, is that, that a that, Merrill? That's yeah, it is. It's it's ours. Barry's okay. got his own at home. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right now, yeah. Like, and you got a Jelco. That's gonna be that's gonna got, be a collector's that, item. Yeah. Barry, I think Barry found that something like, used they somehow. The, uh, he found it somewhere. Was solid solid somewhere. Hand. I can't believe that company so, chose to close you know, the doors just when this is getting big. And I'm about done with the first set of Astes four sides, and he comes in and he's like he's like you know what we better do a second set and send them to keith just in case he asks for him he probably won't even ask for him but that way we'll have him done you know whatever and I'm like okay cool so then you know he left he was out in the out in the lounge jordan i'm just in the room by myself cutting away and i'm like i don't know i'm like on side two of four or whatever just sitting there music's going lays going cutting i turn around and keith richards just walks into the room he no didn't tell me he was gonna he was coming didn't whatever, and the music's going and I can't really stop because I'm in the middle of a cut, um so I just kind of wave and like you know and he's kind of coming in he's kind of like bopping around the room it was the stuff was on tape and he comes he goes over to the tape machine he goes, <laughs> and then he goes over to the lane and the thing's cutting and he goes. <laughs> And then at the time I had, I believe I have it over here still. At least he didn't put his finger on the tape. But it just, you just could see him. Yeah, I used to keep my cleaning alcohol in a bottle like this, and it was sitting there. And then he looked at that, and he picked it up, and he goes, <laughs> just totally goofing, whatever. And then side so finished, and like you know, so like proper introductions, or whatever. And like, and he had people with him, like his daughter was with him, and his manager, and somebody else. We talked for a few minutes, just like five minutes maybe, and then you know he's like, "Oh, what's next?" And the like the first song in the next side, like he was really excited about. So I'm like, "Yeah," he's like, "Yeah, let's do it." So I put it up and start the thing going, and I let him sit in the seat, whatever. And he was all like, you know, vibing, whatever. He got up after that song was done. The sides continue on, and they all just kind of shuffled out to the lounge. So I obviously stay here because I got to finish the side. The side finished, and I go outside. It was just like, and that was it. Like they just, like, you know, they just moved out. It was like, it was almost like it never happened. Like, <laughs> like, like an almost, apparition. Like, like an yeah, apparition. almost like it was a dream. <laughs> well, the this probably came from Barry. It was Barry. really cool though. It was people would come from Barry as they let y'all know they were coming, and they had he wanted a mirror in the room and an ashtray, 
and like Coke with, you know. That might have been when he was working with Greg on something. I hear a mirror and Coke and I'm thinking something. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, no. Like he wanted a, a glass of whatever his beverage was in, in a mirror and an ashtray. And y'all are like, no, there's no smoking in here. Well, it's Keith Richards. Dude, there's no smoking. Well, he's going to have a handler. And he had like six people. And the, the mirror was to make sure. And like, you see he has that dishuffled look, you know, with his his, his, his um, rings and everything. And you think, well, that's that's just a dishuffled look. He's dishuffled. But no, they really practice. They work hard on making to look that, that Sure, way. it's an image. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and... So Barry was telling me all about that. It must have been a different time he came in the Sterling. Right, but I, the thing is, is there, that's yeah. why I was wondering. I thought, well, yeah. maybe Ryan doesn't want to tell this. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Because they were like, no, it was just like it was just like this magic weird thing where he was in my room for like twenty minutes and he was just kind of like grooving to the music and then he just disappeared. What about when <laughs> well, when he was happy when yeah, uh, he Jimmy was. Jimmy Page came? Barry said and he's and he remembered Barry's name. Oh yeah, and yeah. just kind of. But then, but then they're describing how Keith Richards, the person that you would think would be the who gives a shit, like where he has to have six people that are handlers. And they said when Roger Waters came in, he just, hey, I'm Roger, I'm here to listen to the record. And then, like, oh, okay. You know, yeah, it's, it's like funny you, how some people, yeah, just self sufficient, some people, and some people come with a, with yeah. a crew. <laughs> yeah. But Roger yeah. Waters does not have that visual image that's that true. that's the that's big true. difference yeah, yeah. He, wouldn't, he wouldn't be as recognized like walk like anyone's going to recognize keith richards walking yeah because the, the outfit and the hair and every part of it is yeah. part of that whole package right i know but you don't really think of it until you, you start ex that's what's it. so great about it it's, it doesn't it doesn't call attention to itself you just expect it to be there yeah because that's who he is but he's can't walk around like that all the time obviously <laughs> yeah it's like so what you think of the usqr I think it's it's all right. Will it work? <laughs> it takes up too much space on the shelf, no, Chad. You want, oh it needs, my it god! Needs, it needs to take up. Uh, it needs the real estate. These are records that that deserve it. Right, um, right. I. It's like, why do you use that old now? There's a lot of mentions of Chad Cassim all over here. Hey man, it's a lot of. When you write your own line, I know it's not. <laughs> Cassim, Chad Cassim, <laughs> Where's your picture? You didn't get your picture? Oh, no, your picture's... Oh, no, Gary Sahlstrom's picture's in here, but no Chad Cassim picture. You can update that one moving forward, right? There you go. Um, but no, this is... Yeah, so... I'm, I'm interested are to you know gonna more help? about... Are you going to help? Are you going to have... I will help you with nothing. Culture. <laughs> my go-to Techniques 1200, just... To, just I think I, I think my four-year-old just sat on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and I, didn't, I didn't know you could literally snap the S arm off of a 1200. Like, oh, I wow. thought those things were... Like, You're I've had 1200s yeah. that survived house fires. Like, yeah. totally <laughs> covered in soot and everything. Plug in and just fires up fine. Yeah. But your they do not survive pandemics with three daughters yeah. in the house. But <laughs> your children are sending you a message. They're sending me a message. I need to... To get a better upgrade. turntable. Oh, <laughs> great. I get that. <laughs> exactly yeah, I right. I my wife. Yeah. yeah. But I, I had a funny conversation the other day. I had interesting to get uh, uh, thoughts here. Um, Bob Weir, we, we're putting some records out with him. And he was uh, buying some records in the third man storefront. And he got really excited about, um, he wanted a good turntable that he could bring with him on the road. Portable turntable, all in one, uh, so he could set it up backstage, listen to stuff. That's how he wants to listen to them. He doesn't want to be on digital. Like, awesome, great, this, what a cool thing. And so it was like, what's the one to get? Like, what's the highest high-end portable all in one? And I was like, a vintage KLH turntable. From the seventies, mm -hmm. I'm serious. That's mm -hmm. a, it's a, it's an actual suitcase. Mm -hmm. It's got decent speakers. It's got an okay garage turntable built into it. I don't know anybody making anything like that yeah. now. Uh, so, there's one that I found by, uh, and it's not even really billed as portable, but it's from Plus Audio. Do you know these these folks? I've not seen it before. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Plus it's Plus Audio. Audio or Plus Sign Audio, but they've got like an all-in-one sixteen hundred dollar turntable. Looks looks like legit. And I don't know enough about electronics and coatings and ions that you start talking about, but uh, <laughs> but it's uh, but I sent that to him. I said, "Listen, I don't have one of these here, but this looks this, it looks good." And I said, 
if you're touring the way you're touring, this is this is still qualifies as portable. You know, he's not carrying it on right. the airplane or whatever. Yeah. It's right. gonna end up in a road case. It can go in right. and out like that. Yeah. And so he's like, "Wow, man, thanks for the tip. I'm gonna check it out." Because he was trying to get us to to make a really really high end portable. I was like, "Someone should." What are we all here for? Today? Yeah, let's. Yeah, let's, yeah. Right? let's uh, yeah, we well, we could Dude. bullshit. Yeah, are you talking about mics and amps and lays and lacquers? <laughs> that's all. That's all just B roll right there. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Let you get do what you all are here for. We're gonna. Yeah, there. Listen, as someone it, who's it's, had it's to a start a plant off. from scratch yeah. and throw a party, yes. you wait until the machines are running before you set your party yeah. date. That's I what I that say, much. but yeah. whatever. Well, I think that's a good idea. We're trying to figure out when did y'all have y'all's party. We had it we were... in 2017, I believe. Yeah, February, like February 2017. February. Okay, yeah, so like that was five. fun. And I think we got we actually had records pressing. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, but like we we got we we knew that things were functional in December. And we were originally going to try to do it end of January, and talking with the the, the, the plant team, they're like, we can do it, but if if you gave us another month, it would really really just like you know because we're starting from scratch. We didn't have anyone that. They could you could right. always say another month, another yeah, month. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I was like, I because I was up there at the time. I I was working in Detroit over the holiday break, and so we had the team down here in Nashville, and I was with the plant here up in Detroit. And I was like, you guys just tell me it needs to be February, and I'll make it happen February. Like, because if you guys don't say anything, you have to make a deadline. Everyone deadlock. at Nashville is going to say, all right, we'll do it in January. So I was like, guys, it needs to be February. And like, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> but Doran walked us through tons of it, making sure doing doing, getting us some last minute plating done and all that stuff. It was it was not like hundred percent totally figured out like. Guaranteed, but well, as you still, guys can always oh, say, yeah. it never saying, is. Did Jack get any shit when uh, when he said for all the major labels they all open up pressing plants? What? I mean, no major labels said anything, but a lot of other people had ideas. Yeah. And I'd reached out to some some friends at major labels. And they're like, "Oh, you don't want us to start a pressing plant? We'll probably goof it up." I'm like, "Well, then goof it up. Like, yeah. go ahead. You've yeah. got you've got the means to goof it up. It's yeah. okay." They're much better at closing pressing plants <laughs> than done, opening they've, them. They've done far oh, more. Oh, please. <laughs> Yes. I remember begging, begging MCA, don't close Gloversville. It's a tiny little place. It's making money. It's a depressed area. Let those people have jobs and you'll make money. Nope. I don't know. You know, it's funny. To me, this is a new record. Turn that over. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let's see. To you. me, this is this is a new record. That's how... Old... And that's... Uh, well, I guess it's, it's four sides, but it was, you know, two rails. It was nice that it's... Oh, okay, it's two reels. Yeah. So it's uh, like, yeah, A, B, C, D. You mean because the tape box is, doesn't have, it's not all torn and frayed and... and no, it's, I mean, you can, it's... Take this back to the square. It's, uh, it's, it's 20 years old, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah 2003, so 19. Recorded tw in, uh, in May of, of 20... Uh, of of 02, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's, You're mostly used to handling tapes that are 50 and 60 years old, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I, I get scared as hell, you know, especially the ones that come on pancakes. I mean, like Ryan and them are yeah. like, oh, yeah, no problem. I'm like, dude. It's a skill, man. He's got the skill. <laughs> well, I saw Doug Sachs drop one. one. Come. It was like three pancakes in, in a film canister all on top of each other. And it was all falling apart all over the room, like looped on things to get it unknotted. It was oh. like, I mean, it took me like a day and a half. I was like, I would work for a while, like on digital stuff, or whatever. Then I'd go back to like, you know, okay, oh, this is man. going through here, and I'm like looping around, like, yeah, it was crazy. I've got pictures of my phone. Well. And that was Muddy what Waters was folk singer, is that what it was? No, it was, <laughs> I can't remember what it was. It was some, kind, it was some kind of like esoteric kind of thing. I can't wow. remember the artist now. So yeah, no, it's. Um... So Ryan, you already. Already examined the tapes a little bit. And... Yeah, I I I um I listened to them. I transferred them into digital just so I can kind of do some previewing without shuttling them back and forth a million times. They they, um, they look good. Yeah, they played perfectly and the splices were all good and that's the kind of stuff I, I didn't want to have to like spend time today like you know if that needed like splice repair right. or you know anything else. But is there splices? Oh yeah, because it's all cut. You know, it's cut like the record. It's you know. Which is unusual for a record from 2002, 2003. Yeah. Usually, 
even if it was done on tape, it would be, you know, there's 14 songs, there'd be 14 reels. Yeah. And they'd do it one at a time in the digital and then cut it or then make a, you know, back then make a CD or whatever. So the fact that it's actually got edited on tape in sequence and put on two reels is, well, this is super this, unique. <laughs> this is what I, my guys yeah. want to hear, man. Yeah. They like yeah. hearing that. You know, I mean, this is yeah. like edits in the master. It's the absolute analog master. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and yeah, and it's funny, like I was listening to it just to kind of, I mean, I knew the record from, I mean, I've had it for a long time, and, but I was kind of listening to it recently, just kind of re-familiarize myself with it. And I'd hear some of the transitions go by, I'd be like, is that really going to be on the tape like that? And it is. <laughs> it's, all, it's all there. It's like, you know, like little like talking bits and yeah. like, you know, that last song's got a lot of um, uh, like kind of studio banter yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, I'm like, love, is that all going to be? It's, it's like, because that seems like the kind of thing where they would have been like, oh, we have this on like you know a cassette. We're just going to fly it in or something like that. Well, but it's, it's know, really it's all it's too, really all on. You there. Talk about uh, re revisiting it. I I went for the first time in a long time. I looked at the um, the back cover, and it's it's made to be in the style of those old um, uh, like document blues reissues. Um, document or yeah it's document style you got a copy right there so you can that, see yeah. so yeah so it's like you know it's 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 each of the the masters nice. each of the song title and then like the kind of the the position and then the recording information so the city the studio the month and the year nice i just like not exaggerating not shooting you at all i just last week figured out oh a bunch of this info is wrong. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, like no one figured. Like, uh, I was like, oh man, that's not. No, this is. So I'll make sure you okay, have the correct. Yeah, we've, say... we've corrected it on our end for, okay. for for other things, but um, it was interesting that two of these songs. So the bulk of the recording session took place in at Torag uh, Studios in April of two thousand two, um, but two songs were actually recorded at Torag. In November of 2001. Okay. And then one song, uh, the cover, the only cover on the album, I Just Don't Know What To Do With Myself, that was covered, uh, or that was uh, recorded at a BBC, BBC session at Made of Vale um, in 2001. Um, that went out and broadcast. So, so a, couple, a, a handful of these songs, um, people had actually heard and been aware of, I Just Don't Know What To Do With Myself, was actually a B-side before it appeared oh, on okay. the album here. Hmm. Um but yeah, um, the, whoever was fact-checking uh, <laughs> this info for XL or V2 back in 2003 um, didn't get it all right. But I've, I've, I've figured it all oh, out. Oh, and then complete recordings. In, yeah, 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 complete recordings in chronological order with the hashtag there. And the hashtag says, not necessarily complete or in chronological <laughs> order. So, it's a little, uh, what do they say, CYA, cover your ass? Yeah. <laughs> But I tell you, man, they had some nice records, and it sounded nice. And I went, I flipped through the. Yeah. yeah that's a nice set. Nice. Yeah. yeah I, it's that was a, it was a lot of work. It was. Oh pretty, my god. Gnarly. Who did the book? I mean, like, did you have to retype all that? Or. Yeah, a lot of that was all typed. So that was a, a partnership with this guy, um, Dean Blackwood, who's got a label uh, called Revenant Records. So Revenant was originally uh, John Fahey. Right. Exactly. It. Yeah. And so. Later in, in Fahey's life, uh, Blackwood had kind of partnered with him to kind of do new things. So after Fahey died, um, Revenant was solely on, on Dean. And he did a really great uh, Masked Marvel. He did that Charlie Patton box set that won oh, right. yeah, yeah. a load of Grammys yeah. back in the 90s. Uh, they won a, a Keeping the Blues Alive award. and not, We won one, and they won. We we talked right after the yeah. guy. So he so he had that idea. He said, "I want to like Paramount needs to be documented," and um, he kind of gave us a pitch. And he his pitch was a little bit more um, was just the polite way of saying economical. Mm -hmm. And when when he pitched it to Jack, Jack was like, "No, let's fucking blow it out. Like let's do this. Like let's pretend that our our approach is what Paramount would have done." If they had the money, mm -hmm. like what would they have done? Because they were really just doing this as a loss leader. They were just making records to sell their phonographs. Yeah. You know, it's all just a, it's, you know, all of the music business goes back to furniture yeah. in this weird way. Um, so it's like, let's think if they actually gave a shit about what they were recording, how, what's a way to do it um, in tune with 
the uh, the design aesthetics and styles of that time, of the teens through the early 30s, whatever it may be. Yeah, that's a... Well, you know, John Fahey, I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I didn't know who he was, and I was buying records from him, and this guy would, like, call me, say, hey, man, I got some, some of them records, and I'm like, you know, and he, he, he sounded like somebody, a homeless person or something. I, like, and it, when, then the way, the way I figured out who he was, like when I'd get the boxes, he'd use concert posters as packing. <laughs> and sometimes when I'd pull the records out, I'd be like, what? Hey, there's a guy with the same name. Wow. Yeah, same. So he'd use his own concert posters as packing. Right, like he any... Sell, is, would he, was he... At the time, was he sending you like seventy eights or whatever? No, or no, it was, was classical oh, and the yeah, audio yeah. file or the the labels that audio file. Like yeah. I didn't really, dude. I wish I knew what I know now. I guess we all we, do. <laughs> yeah, we, I guess we all. Yeah, we all wish. Um, I'd have forty eight, you forty seven. <laughs> I still, I was as as a die hard record collector. I'd say, like, never even seen a copy, and maybe like my top want, top want is an original pressing of his first album, which he made a hundred copies of. Wow. And he, this is in 1959, I believe. So you gotta remember, this is, this is before Bob Dylan even fucking left Minnesota. Like yeah. this is how early John Fahey was on that stuff. He made a hundred copies and he put them in thrift stores. He, he came up with this, this, this moniker, Blind Joe Death. He wanted people to think it was like, a Folkways archival thing when it was all just him. And it looks like it, too. It looks yeah, like yeah. it and sounds pretty yeah. great, but I've never even seen a copy. It's like you hear whispers of someone like, I think, blah, 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 like uh, supposedly Dr. Demento has a copy because he was friends with Fahey back in the day or whatever. But, um, yeah, if anyone's got uh, one laying around... Uh, yeah, guy in New Zealand, I think, has one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the uh, When I was listening to his music... Like when I was just kind of learn about him, I'm like, oh, look, listen to all these styles. Like, how does a white guy like all these old, and he mixes them all up, and then, then you start to learn that he, it was be listening to these records, and I think that in like in 1984 when I first started, the year CD came out, first started getting into vinyl and and started my business. You still could have probably went maybe from Memphis, I mean, Memphis or Nashville South and still probably done what he was doing oh, yeah. by going knocking on the doors. You know, I'll buy the, the uh, 78. Yeah, the best job any of those guys, it seems like all those guys, like researchers or even record collectors, they would all sign up to be census workers. Because you had an excuse oh, to knock on someone's door. Oh my and god! Like, hey, I never do, you thought know, of... do you have any of those old records? Like, um, I feel like Mac McCormick or Gail, Gail Dean Wardlow. I think both of those guys were like, "Yeah, you'd be a census." Worker. You know, I actually did that in New Jersey about ten years ago, yeah. going knocking on doors for ca local candidates in in New Jersey. Yeah. And while I was talking to them, I'd say, "And you have any records?" You I would do that. Yeah. <laughs> any luck? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's New Jersey for yeah. you. What about the, uh, what is it, Broussard or... Bru Joel Broussard. Yeah. Broussard. Yeah. Is he still living? He's still... They just did a big article about him in the uh, Washington Post. Yeah, I think I saw that. Um, now, who is he? he, he just he, tell the camera who he is? Well, he's he's got a DVD out. It's, it's what, Desperation? Desperate or, Man Blues. Desperate Man Blues. And I mean, it. you got to watch this thing, man. He's, what, he's in West Virginia or Virginia? He's in Virginia, I believe. And I mean, he's got... 78s and he starts playing them man and he starts getting into it you know and tells how he bought all the records so he's I mean, a collector he's not, oh okay. yeah he's a collector but, well he started out though too he's he has a connection with john fahey really? um, okay. so he uh i believe that bussard's label was called phonotone and he did acetate cuts he would do oh. lacquers and you you'd have a mail order catalog and you'd say, okay, I want this. And it's all old-timey, uh, you know, Delta Blues, string band, whatever, that kind of stuff. And he would cut the records as they were ordered. Wow. Um, but he's in his 80s now. I mean, this, uh, this recent Washington Post article is, is great. Any press about this guy, everyone needs to know about him. But he would tell stories about he knows exactly where he was, what year, what day he bought each record. Whew. 
And then they ask him, like, hey, what year were you married? He's like, I don't know. Sometime in the 60s. Okay, he's got his, priori- he's got his priorities straight. Let's, let's Well, they start. talk to his daughter, and it's like, he was a little bit of a, a distant father. But, <laughs> um, but the big thing is that he's got a collection of, of probably maybe 15,078s. Um, you know, the, the best of the best. And there's no, this, this typical question that comes up when folks Who's like us, what happens when he passes away? And he says, oh, well, I'm not worried about that. Someone else will figure it out. How <sighs> generous of him. Interesting. Interest, I mean, Man, yeah, someone, I it, someone will figure it out, I guess. Yeah. Um, Probate court will figure it out. <laughs> or, yeah. Yeah, no, the, I love watching those documentaries. And, uh, and you reminded me, Honey Boy Ed was remembered. The, like when uh, uh, Alan Omax went to meet him, you know, he'd tell you what the temperature was and <laughs> it was sunny that day. And, and then you, you could find the video of Honey Boy on that day or, or, or that weekend or whatever playing. There's like a, a minute clip where he's playing in the town in, in color. It might be colorized, I don't know, but it would have been 1942. And it's, it was not only did he record him right after or right before Muddy Waters, yeah. uh, but they were all like, what does that white man want? You know, no, we're not here. <laughs> you know, like, pulling, like, the, pulling the curtains back. Right. Yeah. It's that Lomax yeah. guy again. <laughs> like, well, he's got $20. All right. Yeah, we'll go aside. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, we made that, that, that plantation recording, we only did a thousand. Yeah, of them. I got one. I bought one of those. They they go on for like six hundred now. Wow. You cut that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I never got a copy of it. Oh. <laughs> man. You should have asked me before. I should have. I should have. <laughs> no, come on, man. You didn't get a copy. Oh we'll wait though. I'm going to blame Gary. Chad will sell you. <laughs> He'll sell you one. It's not a problem. Yeah, no problem. $600. Yeah, I mean, how much is this going to cost with trade? You know? <laughs> so what's our next step? What do we do? All right, man. Yeah. Let's what do this do? thing. Yeah. Just so you don't get the grooves. Actually, right. I need I need that information from you. I don't have the scribe number. Oh shit! <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I, of all the stuff we, we were talking we, about, we can do it later, though, right? Too. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, 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 it's better. I could mark it on the outside of the. Of I the, could call. Let me call mom.